while after much hype and anticipation, DLSS, Deep Learning Super Sampling, has arrived for Microsoft Flight Simulator and is activated on those with an RTX graphics card, Series 2000 or above. DLSS was implemented as part of Sim Update 10, released in late September, and with it bringing the promise of improved FPS for our flights, for both our monitors and VR headsets. In this video we're going to look at performance in both, and see whether it lived up to expectation, or was it just hype. This is the Sim Hanger, my name's Mark, thanks for watching, and let's get started. We'll be jumping to the results shortly. If you're unsure of what DLSS is and what it does, then check out this video, link in the notes below. Also, we're talking about DLSS 2.0 and not DLSS 3. That's a completely different animal and is not yet released into the market. For more details, check out this video, once again link in the notes below. We should note that it's still early days for Microsoft Flight Simulator and the DLSS implementation. As mentioned in my previous video, Microsoft Flight Simulator will get an optimized NVIDIA driver, which should improve DLSS performance. That driver has not yet been released at the time of recording this video, 26th of September. Programs that have not been optimized still gain the benefit of DLSS, but more at a default or generic level. So as things stand today, Microsoft Flight Simulator is not optimized for DLSS but can still take advantage of its features. Here are the InSim settings I've used for this test. As DLSS is an upscaling technique and uses a different upscaling factor depending what mode you're using, and importantly, what resolution you're upscaling to, my results should be considered indicative only. Your mileage may well vary depending on your graphics card, resolution, and overall system performance. As I have a 3090 graphics card, I've chosen 4K for this test, and we'll be comparing performance to TAA anti-aliasing mode. We'll only be using DX11, as DX12 mode is not fully supported. It's still in development and is subject to memory leakage, resulting in a decreasing performance over a period of time. The settings I've chosen here are my set and forget settings and will provide me with a good performance no matter where I'm flying. However, my actual settings are somewhat academic. What's important is they stay the same for all tests. As DLSS upscales the image, and by varying degrees there's a loss of graphics fidelity, I have experimented with different anseotropic filtering and texture super sampling settings. My results have been negligible both in terms of improvement in visuals and FPS. By now I'm sure you're aware of the various settings and the impact on performance, so I won't be running through them here. Let's get on with the tests. For this test I've selected the default Beechcroft Bonanza. In addition to the two G1000 panels, the texturing and PBR on this aircraft is of the highest standard. We'll be flying over London. It's midday with scattered clouds. The combination of photogrammetry, generous mix of waterfall reflections, as well as graphically intensive built-up areas allow for a good real-world test. These two flights are not a replay of the same flight. I flew each leg independently, utilizing the autopilot. I could have used the replay option, no problem, but I didn't want anything to interfere with the results. On my system we can see DLSS is giving me a better FPS, and over the course of this test it averaged around 12-13% to using the quality setting. Because I've set my resolution at 4K, the upscale factor is 2, but overall the loss of image quality was nominal, in my case a sacrifice certainly worth making. If your graphics card is at a 3070 level or above, I'd recommend that you start by using the quality mode and assessing performance, regardless of what resolution you've opted for. If you're getting better results, you now have the option of enjoying the smoother flights or returning to your settings and tweaking them up further. If your performance is not satisfactory, you have the option of selecting a different mode, such as balanced or performance, or alternatively selecting a lower resolution, from 4K to 1440p for example. I recommend you keep your in-sim settings the same during your tests, otherwise the results can get somewhat confusing. I would also strongly recommend you do all tests in full screen mode and not windowed mode. 
In my test, for some reason, the window mode would keep the base or native resolution unchanged, resulting in the same FPS no matter what mode I chose. Let's have a quick look at what's really going on here. Some of the figures are fairly hard to read, my apologies, but I can't control the colours. In this snapshot, DLSS is giving me about 11 frames per second more, and here we can see how it's doing it. At quality mode, the render upscale is times 2 And here we can see DLSS is actually rendering it at 1440p and then upscaling to 4K. Whereas in TAA mode, the base or native render is 4K. DLSS is rendering the image faster. We can get an indication of that by looking at the median under DLSS, which is 10 millisecond, compared to 144 milliseconds under TAA. And whilst I give with one hand, I shall take with the other. Yes, there's a penalty to using DLSS. As it's an upscaled image, there'll be a loss of graphics fidelity, and that degree of loss will depend on what mode and resolution you're using. In my case, because I used the quality setting, the upscale factor was only 2. If you're using balance, for example, the upscale factor will be 3, or thereabouts. So the initial render will be at 1080p. The conversion from 1080p to 4K will impose a bigger penalty than 1440p to 4K. It's a matter of balancing the increase in FPS to the image rendered in front of you. If you want the benefits, you'll have to invest a bit of time. There is one area of concern, however, when using DLSS, and that is reading text within a cockpit. Some of the text can appear very blurry. As far as I understand it, and I stand to be corrected, this is happening within DLSS because it's taking the whole image and upscaling it from a lower resolution. Whilst natively in TAA mode, text such as your speed tape etc. are HTML code, not a graphic. Asobo are aware of this, and I'm sure they're discussing this issue with NVIDIA. However, the very nature of DLSS and what it's doing means this is no easy fix. And one option that Asobo are looking at is to mask out the HTML code so it's not part of the DLSS upscale. I imagine Asobo are waiting to see what the optimization from NVIDIA will bring prior to making any changes. If you have a graphics card that's capable of running at 4K and utilize DLSS on quality mode, you'll find the penalty is nominal. At other modes, the penalty increases proportionally. And in my tests, I find that especially so in VR. Here are my settings, and once again we'll be pitting TAA against DLSS in quality mode. And within the DLSS options we have exactly the same as we have for monitor mode. Balanced, performance and ultra performance options. For TAA my render scale is 100, and I don't recommend you change that. Within the VR settings you now have a reprojection mode. I'm leaving that off, as hopefully I won't need it. I'll get enough frames just using DLSS. Once again, these are my set and forget settings that I found will give me a reasonable performance no matter where I fly. I'm not immune to micro pauses, but they're few and far between. My tests are done with the HP Reverb G2 using Windows Mixed Reality. You'll know which settings are the heavy hitters, so I won't be covering that today. The only one I'd like to highlight is off-screen terrain pre-caching. Again, it's system dependent, but experiment with different settings here can have a marked difference on the FPS achieved. My thanks to VR Flight Sim Guy for bringing this issue to my attention. It's a big hitter. My OpenXR tools for Windows Mixed Reality settings are as shown on screen. Preview mode is on. Custom render scale is set at 100%. And again, I strongly recommend you don't change this. If you need to dial back your render scale, to achieve an acceptable performance, well in my opinion, you may well be better off not using DLSS for VR at all. Stick with TAA and use the OpenXR toolkit. This may well yield better results. If you do use the DLSS mode in VR, then make sure you don't use the upscaling function within the OpenXR toolkit. They're both doing similar things. If you do, you won't get the results you're expecting. For my test today, I've disabled the OpenXR toolkit. I'm not using it. I've applied all the same parameters as I did for my test on my monitor. Everything is exactly the same. 
and both comparisons are individual flights. Regular subscribers will be aware that my set and forget settings in VR are designed to give me 32 to 33 FPS in high density areas, allowing me to fly wherever I want and still get a smooth performance. Both of these modes worked very well for me. It was smooth and we can see the DLSS performance is significantly higher than that of the TAA mode. I haven't exactly measured it, but we're looking at about an additional 10 frames at the quality mode setting. That's an improvement of over 25%, and that's significant. The same limitations and restrictions apply as covered earlier in this video. I found the blurriness of the numbers not too bad because I was only using an upscale factor of 2. Whilst not shown here, I also tried at balanced and performance mode, and by the time I got there, whilst most of the numbers were almost unreadable. So in terms of legibility, well, the upscale factor is critically important. With these results, I can now return to my InSim settings and tweak them up a bit, whilst maintaining a fluid flight. So this early implementation of DLSS in Microsoft Flight Simulator is a mixed bag, but overall it's a step in the right direction and largely positive. The reality of the situation is DLSS is not really aimed at those on 3080 Ti's or 3090's. Those that will get the best benefit or the most benefit from DLSS are likely to be those on lower end and mid-range systems and I've found results more positive if you push it to the higher resolutions. But like most things in Flight Sim, it's a trial and error, until you find just what's right for you. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found this useful and informative. I'll see you again soon, and bye for now.